Thank you very much, good evening. It's an honor to be talking to you. Uh, I'm glad we were given only two minutes. Those of you who do know me when I take the microphone, unless I have my cards, that means I'm going to be talking for an hour, probably. All right. So I'll try to stick to the two minutes. The Haggadah, the text that sets forth the order of the Passover Seder, tells us that in every generation, one must feel as though he or she is personally has been rescued from Egypt. It is told that John Adams, Ben Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson, influenced by the Passover story, they proposed an American seal with an image of the Jewish exodus from Egypt. The Bible, the Bible tells us that God created man in his own image. The Quran, the holy book of Muslims, tells us of God breathing of his own spirit into Adam. Elsewhere in the Quran, God says, and we have endowed the children of Adam with dignity. We derive much of our sense of who we are through the attributes of God, the all perfect, free, dignified, and honored. I do believe we are hardwired to seek a dignified life free of coercion. I was born in Damascus, Syria in 1961, and by the time I was a teenager in the 1970s, the Assad, the father, the current dictator of the father of the current dictator, had solidified his grip on power to become the sole oligarch and the absolute ruler taking the entire country and its citizens hostage with his intelligence and secret police apparatus as the iron fist tool, much like Pharaoh of Egypt ruled and did. As a child, I remember always hearing of America as the land of liberty and opportunity. To me, America was my promised land. <clears throat> Even my parents, who were Palestinian refugees in Syria, urged us to seek that land where we will be free from the persecution of Syria's Pharaoh. On my first short trip to the U.S. in 1979, I returned with a small U.S. flag that I used to adorn my bedroom desk with it, despite my dad's pleas to watch out as that alone could land me in some underground cell without due process or trial. My final move that I call my exodus took place in 1986 after earning my medical degree. Despite my relative cushy lifestyle back there, I was determined to never look back. And I actually literally never did, even as I was boarding the plane. Frankly, I was quite convinced, given the extreme brutality and viciousness of the regime, that my people of Syria had completely given up on even trying to attain and extract their rightful God-given liberty and dignity. It took a few decades until all hope seemed lost when, three years ago, an incident of protest expressed by a few children in the small city of Daraa ignited what had since turned into one of the bloodiest and deadliest struggles of attempting to topple the Pharaoh and his men and deliver the nation free from his tyranny. This was a calling from which there was no escape. Extending a helping hand to the struggling people to pull them from under the rule of Pharaoh was a moral obligation and a duty. I'm going to skip to make it a little shorter and say on this special day, let the Passover be a symbol for all of us as the Jewish people struggled to attain liberty and remember their subsequent deliverance from Pharaoh, the symbol of many of today's tyrants. Let us strive to sustain and maintain our honorable values for our posterity to enjoy. Let our children know the price at which their liberty had come about and equip them with the tools necessary to remain vigilant in this pursuit. On this blessed and special day, may your lives always be filled with joy of liberty and dignity. Thank you very much.